we're on okay um good evening everybody um less than eight this week um and we're carrying on with our african animals that we've been doing um we've been looking at a few different artists as well to uh inspire what we're doing um so i've been looking at an artist who who breaks down the backgrounds of the images and the images themselves lots of um shapes almost like um looking at a uh, at a stained glass window and um now what i'm going to do this week is um i'm going to i'm going to show you that stuff again um i haven't done much on it since last week but um i'm going to start on a different, i'm going to be using palette and i'm going to use the idea of using that inspired by another artist to um show move well and i've got a few other little um techniques that you could adapt or adopt, use um, to help with your work. Well, experiment too. Um, so we'll have a look at the animal that I've chosen this week uh, to do my painting of. So we'll go over to the studio wall. Hey, it's the warthog. <laughs> so I've chosen <laughs> I've chosen this picture um, because uh, it's moving quite quickly and it's quite dramatic and obviously this beautiful creature has got so much uh, character as well so it would be a great one uh, to have a little play around with uh, using neat. Um, so when I collected all the images for this project um, I obviously found lots of photographs of these animals but I also found um, this photograph here, um, which is by an artist called The Hall, um, and he uses a lot of this um, palette stuff to um, create the sense of movement to the point where the animal almost like, disappears from the set. <laughs> I actually mean this as well. So we've got um, quite defined details at the front. So you've got very definite details where the, the heads of these um, jackals, is it a jackal, I think, um, what it is. Uh, and then we've got these wiping textural marks coming off the back to give it a sense of movement. Um, the background is quite simple uh, as well. So you've got the contrast between the textures of the um, ah, hyenas. Hyenas, I think they're hyenas, aren't they? hyenas uh, and the background which is very very smooth the hyenas being textured a bit so i'm going to be aiming for something like this with um the warthog um this evening i've started it off already and i thought i would oh, excuse me yeah, that. Uh, so i thought i would start off um by Starting as I mean to carry on, which is um, to use uh, lots of texture straight from the off, uh, create a background, and then literally draw back over the top of the of the back, then start creating animal pop. All right, so that's the inspiration. Um, the next piece of work. In. So um, I'll take you over to the Yes. So obviously you remember um, this lovely um, uh, water buffalo. Uh, I have um, worked into it a little bit uh, today when I was passing away um, to the art class. And you'll see on here um, what I mean. So last week I was doing a lot of this scratching back here. So I talked about how you could use like a bit of candle wax. Uh, such as this, put that on the surface, paint over the top, and then scratch back through. But if you do, if you want to scratch back and you don't particularly have time or you're not on on that level with using the wax paint, then the thing to do is just scratch it back as you use. It. So whilst the paint is wet, scratch it back. And it'll dry really quickly because it's acrylic, and then it, within a few minutes, uh, you should be able to then start working over the top of that as well. Um, but I've got a few other bits to show you before we get off of that. Over here, just down here, you can see all these little tiny dots. 
and that was me using uh, this morning using a, a toothbrush to splatter in certain areas and that's quite useful to create a bit of atmosphere but it's also really nice when you've got these harsh edges you can just soften them really lightly so that then you've got that bit of atmosphere uh, and you've got these just a bit kind of crossing over the back from the soft a little bit joined up as well so just to remind you what i did with this background i was looking at um the artist with the elephant from last week um i put that sorry oh yes yeah so you remember this artist i was inspired by this kind of stained glass window effect background uh, so i've started to put some of that in and the way to start that off um, is to literally draw some curvy lines that perhaps intersect a bit as well. So if I just zoom again, you may just be able to make out some lines going here and some lines going across them. So that forms the idea um, and the sort of direction of that, that you can then start to continue. Now I encouraged everybody. Um, at class today, once you've put down some marks and things, don't feel like, oh, that's it, I've done it. Keep layering the paint on top of each other, even if you think maybe it doesn't need it too much. Add a little bit more because what it does it starts to add a little bit of depth uh, to the color, makes them a bit more rich. Interesting. Well, now um, the other thing you can do. Um, Remember if I said two is then use your paint, water down, add a little bit of depth, and it kind of goes in with what I was doing with the rest of this um, water. But if you water down your paint so it's quite translucent, you can start to add extra kind of shadows and things into your picture. So let's say oh, the light's coming down, the light's coming down from this direction. So I'm more likely to have a dark on this side. I can a little bit of a what I call a glaze over the top of my mark like this, and it will add shadow, but without removing all of your really nice mark. And whilst that's wet. If you think oh, I've done a bit too much there, you could use a finger or a piece of tissue to rub a little bit, bit, bit off. Because while usually while the acrylic paint's a little bit damp, you can manipulate it a bit. I also did that last week just over here on the foliage background. So I'll do a little bit more. You can add a little bit more shadow so your foliage feels like in the middle. So there we've got a little bit more over the top of all these layers. Right? So oh now um this is one thing I'd like to show you as well. So this this uh, little blue pack over the top of the experimental bit last week. So I'll just put a bit of indigo over the top of this clear candle back here. And even when it's dry, if you've got something sharp, or, or this is quite, quite nice to use, a little bit of sandpaper, you can rub the surface on top of the acrylic paint once it's dry, and you can create these kind of rough textures. Like this. So all that is is candle wax underneath, clear candle wax, so that the colours that I've got beneath there show up when I rub the face. And when you've done that, you use um, acrylic paint, which isn't so watered down. It's a bit more like it is out of the tube. Paint over the top, and then you can sand through. You can even scratch it right off. I'm just using my nail here, but you can scratch it right off. So you can draw back into the acrylic even after it's, which is 
really good fun to do. And I'll just show you the old toothbrush. So this is something that I used to absolutely do all the time. Really love doing it. Um, is you get your acrylic, put it down. You add water onto the um, toothbrush. Do that. Mix it around, and then test it on the on the plate or somewhere. So you may not. You may want to control this a little bit more. Splatters everywhere. And then if you hold the toothbrush quite close to the surface, you can you can create quite a nice fine spray like that. So if I go over to the bottle, quite runny look, quite watery. Uh, and then I'll go, I'm going to, I don't mind about this, so I'm just going to, where this highlight is in the ear. right and then obviously the other things you can do to stop splattering getting in places you don't want it is put some paper down and then do the, the splattering um you can also uh once you've painted it and it's dry you can repaint it one of the great things about it. all right so just a couple of things there to show you with technique so this is our peter hall painting this is my warthog you can see those up there on the screen so i've i've already started to um sketch out and create the background what i did before i did anything else was i used a big flat brush so this kind of shape of brush here but a bigger one and i got my paint watered it down a little bit so this is the yellow ochre i covered the whole sheet of paper so you don't need to wait too long then I got a hold of my uh, pink this palette knife and um, some acrylic paint. You can add water to it if you want, but it's quite just. I just really enjoy doing this scratching back, um, and then you just drag the um, here, drag it over the top. You start just to get quite loose mark, and if you use the flat of the um, palette knife like this rather than tilted, um, then you'll find that you can get different sort of more ragged marks on there as well. Oh, excuse me. So yeah, you can drag it across like this. And then once I'd done that background, I'd then start to draw the warthog over the top. So obviously it just looks really messy and things at the moment, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work into the warthog to bring him out of the background. I'm gonna work into the background, send that back again. Then I'm going to create these Peter Hall um, effects like this. So I just, Sometimes it's great if you just start off in the spirit of what you want to do, even if it doesn't look anything like when it's you get into that kind of you, you overcome the uh, the fear of using these techniques before you start actually applying them. Purposely, it, it helps you to do some art. Later. So um, that's my plan for this evening. We'll see how it goes, and um, so I hope everybody else is getting on all right with their um with their animals. and obviously i'll well all right so um does anyone have any questions yes please yeah sure um so have you sorry jamie have you used wax on this picture on this one no yeah. no no wax at all it's literally just scratching surface or scraping surface um palette yeah i've yeah. no, uh, not done anything what, other than that so when you are doing wax do yeah. you put a coat on first then put wax on uh you put the wax on 
So you can do some paint first if you want to, uh, like I did. So the yellow ochre went first, then I did the scraping, then I did the drawing. Okay, so um, as you can see, I've started here very loosely working in some of the tones and shadows to bring the form of um, uh, our lovely uh, warthog out of the background here. So you'll see as I progress through the painting that things become a little slightly more refined and everything as I start to add in more tones. But then also here you can see that I'm adding in the highlights. So I'm literally using a Payne's Grey with a bit of indigo. Uh, and also I'm using just uh, a plain white here, perhaps sometimes with a touch of um, the yellow ochre in there as well. Uh, just to start mapping out the overall kind of shape and form of it. Um, now the background is really busy, so that is going to end up being a bit of a distraction um, if we don't sort of work into it a little bit more. Now it's not to say that I'm covering everything that I've done previously. Some of those marks will um, inevitably come through in different places. So it's okay just to work back over the top. And if you look at how our pi picture over here by Peter Hall, um, you can see that there's a very nice smooth um, background here which actually draws the attention into the texture of the hyenas. Um, so um, now you can see I've, I've swapped brushes. I'm working into the detail with a little bit more um, um, definition, I suppose you might call it, um, on here. And you can start to see the features of our warhog start to appear here. Now the other thing to, to note, of course, is that if you um, really look closely, as you're progressing on your painting, you'll notice a few um, errors or mistakes that you want to change. And the nice thing about acrylic, of course, is that you can do those things and then work back into them. Just here, you'll see I've added a little bit more of um, the warthog's hair on the top, because uh, I noticed it was a bit far, far back. And if you look at the, um, the eye, the hair just starts behind the eye on the top of the head there. Um, so the other thing I'm doing as well, which is um, quite nice, is doing some, like I was explaining earlier, some um, pale washes of colour over the top. Not worrying too much about um, streaks and details and stuff like that um, and that sort of thing. I'm actually using that as an addition to what I'm trying to achieve on this piece as well. So just a few seconds ago, I was scraping back through the um, the image onto the back of the warthog because I'd like that to be very much like the hyenas with those details kind of almost missing on there as well. So you can see things start to uh, take shape a little bit more on here now. We've got a little bit more detail on the head, but um, the idea was that I would kind of not make it so obvious towards the back um, uh, to give it this dramatic feel like um, Peter Hall's work has on there as well. So I'm using um, some more uh, light washes of colour back over the top here. I used a little bit of green in the background just behind the head because the important thing is that we've got a little bit of contrast in here as well to sort of lift the warthog out of the background and the, the, the green adds a little contrast to the warmer um, colours in the picture which again gives it this um, really exciting and contemporary feel because the colours bounce off each other a bit more too. So um, at some point during uh, the process here, the other thing that I did was I did take a photo of the photo above and I turned it into quite um, a stark or impact it's called on my phone black and white image to help me um, recognize where the, um, a lot of the highlights are 
in the animal's um, body and head and so forth as well. See me holding my phone there at the same time. So having a lot of fun with this now, um, really enjoyed getting the detail of the head in there as well. Everything needs refining still, but you'll see how things gradually change. What I tend to do is I'm working in thin layers of paint and then occasionally bringing back um, some heavier, more opaque colours as well. So it's very much a mixture between those two in order to create this um, sense of um, movement without getting too involved with the detail. Um, what I just did there was what I was talking about earlier, which was using the um, toothbrush, a uh, very normal sort of toothbrush, um, basically to add some splattering technique on there because we've got this very dusty kind of scene in the picture. Um, so I've, in, I've incorporated some of this kind of splattering to represent some of that in there too. Um, and again, um, you'll notice on the Peter Hall picture that he uses these um, these kind of almost like blobs on, on the legs so that you can tell the legs are there, but they're not um, very well defined. They're just highlighted using the um, using the paint there or the palette knife. Um, you'll see it also just a second ago, I shortened the nose. I thought the nose was a little bit long. Um, I still needed to get the shape of the nose slightly better, but um, whilst painting, you know, you just get really involved with it and you move on to something else, or I do anyway. So I've used the palette knife and added some green on the ground. I'm just referring back to the original uh, Peter Hall picture again. I'm looking for um, how he's applied the shadows and things. And in, in a little while, you'll see how I completely change the background and decide to uh, remove quite a bit of the, the detail at the top, particularly in order to quieten down the background and draw attention to the rest of the image. So some small details I've, uh, as you can see with the little tail on the back there, some small details can be um, put into the picture. Um, without going too far with that detail, um, just to sort of get the length of his body um, painted in there as well. So we get a sense of how big he is and how, how he's moving through the painting, or through the picture, playing or the landscape. So really what I, you know, what I've done here, um, and this is how you should treat it is as I've played with the picture I've tinkered around uh, until I kind of see something I like um, with this kind of painting you know you have a plan of how you want to do it and things but you know it, uh, you want to give yourself plenty of uh, space to play around and, and see what emerges when you start to, to push the idea um, in different directions but I hope you've enjoyed um, watching the video tonight and um, please don't forget to subscribe and uh, I'll be posting a couple more lessons in the next few weeks. Thanks very much.